Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to SimTech channel. Now, this is part two of this tutorial, tutorial eight on short circuit current calculations. Now, in part one, we uh, were discussing the fundamental of a ring connected reactor system, as we can see here. And we resolved that a ring connected system is basically a delta system. Then we needed to convert or transform from a delta into a star configuration and we got to a point where we had uh, all the x percent reactants that we actually need to determine here and were then replaced by x over 3 okay so that is converting from a delta system into a star system now if this is the first time you're watching this tutorial please watch part one of this tutorial so that you don't catch a snake in the middle now before we move forward also please don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up that will be highly appreciated i thank you so very much so from this point on we can clearly see that our center point here is the star point and we can further manipulate this configuration so that we can reduce it and this can also be written in this fashion as we can see that our star point haven't moved we still have our star point here and this is where the fault is okay so this is f where the fault is we can clearly see at that point there so now we need to calculate the equivalent resistance of this branch and this branch okay so that is where we left off from the previous tutorial well there are basically two methods you can do this this is basically simple algebra that you have to implement so the method one uh, for solving this parallel branch is basically to multiply okay so that will basically mean the parallel of ga and gb will be 0 comma 2 plus x3 so that is that one expression times the expression at the bottom which is basically the same expression and that is then divided by the sum of the two expressions and so from here you have to do some basics algebra manipulation we can see that the 0 comma 2 will multiply the 3 so that give us 0 comma 6 plus the x and then you have a 3 common denominator you do the same on the other side basically you're going to have the same situation emerging on every other side okay and from here we've got another simple algebra rule of a division of a division by another division right so now to solve these rules stipulate that we have to multiply the top expression by the inverse of the bottom expression and as a result we're then going to get 0 comma 6 plus x squared that is this expression over 3 times 1.2 plus 2x as you can see that the 3 here was inverted and then cancelled with the 9 there to give us a 3 okay and from here we can then factor the 2 out of this bottom expression here and that 2 will then multiply the 3 and we're going to get then 0, 0,6 plus x squared over 6 times 0, 0,6 plus x squared. What does this allow us now is to simplify one of the expression out, okay? And simplifying that will then yield us this 0, 0,6 plus x over 6. And we can further deduce that to 0, 0,1 plus x over 6. Now you can see that this expression is then the result of the parallel branch of GA over gb okay so that is these two have then been reduced to a single impedance that we can replace with this one okay now this is method one basically method two is a quite a short one it is usually applicable if you've got more than two parallel branches and that is simply by doing one over one over the expression on the other parallel branch plus one over the expression on the other parallel branch that way if you got multiple expression here you can just be doing one over whatever is on the other branch there okay and from here we can clearly see that we've got a common denominator situation okay so this denominator and this denominator is exactly the same so it's a common denominator that basically means we can just add a two numerator here so that will give us 1 over 2 over 0, 0,2 plus x over 2, our common denominator. Now we have a division of 1 by a division, right? So what's the, the, the algebra rule said? We have to then multiply 1 by the inverse of this expression. 
so that will then give us one times the inverse of this that means the 0.2 plus x over 3 goes up and the 2 comes down now the, the one can then just falls off because it's not going to uh, change anything so we then only have to deal with this expression here and this expression here if you have to solve it so basically you have to do a cross multiplication here so 0 0.2 times 3 is going to give you 0 0.6 okay then you've got plus now x plus 1 here because there is always a 1 there and that's just going to give you an x okay then 3 times 1 is going to give you a 3 and then you have a 2 okay now here there you have it you've got a division by another division also because there's always a one here okay so that is your division bar okay now here you then just have to multiply this expression here 0 0.6 plus x over 3 right times the inverse of this expression meaning one is gonna go up and two is gonna come down and you can clearly see that the one will fall off so you just have to multiply two times three here because the expression on the top will remain the same and this will give us the same expression as we have there because we're going to have 0 0.6 plus x over 6 here okay and that will also yield the same result as uh, we we got there and now we can go ahead and draw our new drawing replacing our parallel branch so we can clearly see that 0 0.1 plus x over 6 is the result of our parallel branch okay then this point here okay which is a star point can still be found at this point here okay now this become a simple series circuit because we then need to add this expression plus this expression here and adding the two expression so that is the parallel of ga and gb plus x over 3 will then give me this expression here now we then just need to add here by doing a cross multiplication here because this will not be affected for now so that will then give me 0 0,1 plus 9x over 18 because we're going to do 3 times x is 3x plus 6x that give me 9x over 3 times 6 is 18 then we have to simplify here and that simplification will give me 0 0,1 plus x over 2 or x over 2 can also be written as 0 0,5 x right okay so this is then this entire expression here this entire expression here have then been simplified to 0 0,1 plus 0 0.5 x now we can see that this expression will then going to be in parallel with the 0 0,2 j because they are leading into where the fault is now moving on we then have a simple parallel combination here this is the point of our fault so this is this point you can clearly see this is GC, that is 0, 0,2J. From here, you can see that this is this per unit of this generator here. And this 0, 0,1 plus 0, 0,5X is this entire combination of generator B and the ring reactors that are then been, that have then been reduced into this expression. And now we can then calculate the total per unit impedance of this system by simply doing the parallel impedance calculations of 0, 0,2j with this expression and that will then give us this expression here because we can just clearly just multiply and and add the two impedances okay and that will then give us 0, 0,02 plus 0, 0,1x over 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,5x okay and this is where we stop there is no further reduction we can do here so this expression here is our z per unit total but as you can see the z per unit total here cannot be determined because we've got two unknowns here because we've got one unknown here x so we need to find that x so that is where we're going so what is the formula for z per unit well we know that i per unit is one over z per unit right so which mean from here we can deduce that z per unit total is equal to one over i per unit okay so that's qualify our expression now we can see that if we replace z per unit total which is this expression into the formula here okay then we're going to have i per unit as an unknown here 
if we can also find i per unit and replace it into the same formula, then we will only be left with the x here that we can then determine. And that x will then be the reactants that we are looking for. And if we get that x, we replace it into the z per unit total, we're going to find the exact z per unit total of this entire network we have in front of us here. Okay, now we move on. So let's find first our I per unit since we already have Z per unit. So we know that I per unit is I short circuit over I line because we know I short circuit is your I per unit multiplied by the I line. What is the I line? I line is the normal current that is flowing in the circuit when there is no, uh, no short circuits. Okay. So in a normal operation, this IA here is the I line or the current that's flowing this way is the I line. The current that's flowing because these are feeders, okay? So this current that's flowing here, these are the I line, okay? So when there is no short circuit current, and that I line is only there because of a voltage, okay? The voltage that is the 33 kilovolt pass bar, right? Then we can then calculate that I line, okay? So using the 33 kilovolt pass bar voltage, okay? So that is this pass bar voltage, and the base MVA, do not confuse the 600 MVA, that is the fault at this point here, okay, with the base MVA, right? So the base MVA is the chosen base MVA that we did most of the calculations. So that is, we are changing from an old system into a new base system, okay? So using those two values, we can then calculate our I line, as you can see here, that basically SB nu over VB zone, and VB zone being the 33 kilovolt, and SB nu being the 60 uh, MVA, so that gives us a current of basically 1049.73 amp. Okay, so that is the I line. Now, if we've got I line here, we then need to find the I short circuit so that we can calculate the I per unit that we are missing in this formula here. Okay, now you're going to ask how we're going to then calculate the I short circuit. Well, we know that <clears throat> the I short circuit can also be calculated by using the apparent power formula, okay? The S short circuit formula. Now, what is this here? This here is the apparent power, okay? It's the MVA, so it represents the S short circuit. So we can then use the S short circuit formula, that is square root of 3 times VB zone times I short circuit. We can use this formula to then make I short circuit the subject of this formula because we then have all the unknown here. The VB zone is going to remain the 33 kilovolt because that's the voltage in which the short circuit is occurring and the S short circuit is the short circuit that is occurring at that point at the instant of a short circuit. So from here, we can then calculate our short circuit current, which will then be equal to 10,497.23 amp. So that is about 10.5 kilo amps of current, okay? So there is a 10.5 kilo amps of current short circuit at that point, okay? Now we've got the ingredient that we need to find the I per unit. We can then just replace it into the formula here. So that is I short circuit over I line. And that basically just add up to be 10 amps of current, as we can see. We basically did a simple simplification there, okay? And from here, we can then basically go back into our Z per unit total formula and replace our I per unit that we just found to be equal to 10 amps. 10 amps per unit, to be precise, okay? And that will then give us 1 over 10, so that will give me 0. 0.1 J per unit, okay? So this is the Z per unit total that we are looking for. But look here, we've got the whole expression of a Z per unit total with X and all of that. But in reality, that will just sum up to be 0.1 J per unit. We now know it, and now we can then take the Z per unit total expression and replace the 0.1 J into the Z per unit total expression. That means this should then be 0, 1 G per unit because we already know what the value is. Okay, so that will then yield us 0, 0,1 will be equal to this entire expression here. We still have now X. So now all we have to do now here is algebra manipulation. Again, basics of algebra. We now need to make X a subject of this formula. Basically, if we make the X a subject of the formula, 
we can then resolve and find the value of x and as a result we then get 0, 0,3 plus 0.5x times 0, 0,1 that is equal to this expression in the numerator okay then we have to multiply 0, 0,1 with the said expression and that gives me 0, 0,05x plus 0, 0,03 that is equal to 0, 0,02 plus 0.1x right this is basic algebra going on here and from here i'm now just now regrouping the expressions or the terms with the x together so which means i'm bringing the 0, 0,1x to the side and it's becoming negative okay and the 0, 0,03 now need to move to the other side okay and it's becoming negative now we can then solve the like terms together and this then give me minus 0,05x so that is 0,05 minus 0,1 so it gives me minus 0,05x that is equal to minus 0,01 that is the sum or the subtraction of these two expression here okay and from here the negative sign will then just cancel each other okay like that and we then going to have the value of x will then be equal to 0, 0,01 divided by 0, 0,05 and that give me 0.2j okay and this is equal to 20 percent okay so that is 20 percent so this x here okay this x here are then all equal to 20 percent right 20 percent and this one is also equal to 20 percent now something interesting is emerging here as we can see that the all per unit of each one of these generator is also 20 percent and the per unit impedance of these reactors are also 20 percent so if all are 20 percent in this uh, current setup with the 60 mva generators and a 33 kilovolt bus bar voltage the fault here is going to be 600 mva now, if you change the value of these reactors, if you change them to 20 or 18, you're not going to get the same fault. Your fault is either going to go up or it's going to go down, depending on the new value of your Z per unit total here. That you got uh, was what? Equal to 0, 0,1 J per unit. Okay? Because a Z per unit total is what is setting your I per unit. Because... From your Z per unit total, you get your I per unit, and from your I per unit, you can then get your I short circuit. Once you get your I short circuit, you can see that the value of your MVA short circuit, your S short circuit, is directly proportional to the value of your I short circuit because these two are constant, they are not going to change. Okay? Square root of 3 based on the 3 phase, VB zone based on the base uh, zone voltage, it won't change unless you basically change your, your your entire system okay but your short circuit current here is what is setting up the potential fault level mva at this point here okay and that short circuit current is informed by the total impedance okay z per unit total and z per unit total is based on these reactors per unit impedance so this is basically the theory behind these uh, short circuit calculations and the level of protection you need to provide in order to uh, ensure that your circuit does not explode when these situations occur so this is it guys for this tutorial thanks for watching i hope you've learned something in this tutorial and if you find it interesting and useful please give a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel until next time, stay tuned. Cheers.